Hello and welcome back to Fire Emblem Three Houses. I did something that I haven't done this entire playthrough, I think, which is rather than like showing off the progression of the week, I just skipped over it. I don't know why I haven't been doing that for a while, to be honest. In any case, I so I did battles this weekend. I did eating this weekend. The eating was super unproductive, which I'm very disappointed in. The game has misled me into thinking it's a good way to build supports, and then all of a sudden it stops working. I don't know why. But whatever. So we've got... We still got a bunch of supports from the battling, so that's what we're gonna do. I don't... I haven't tried to count how many, so I don't know if it's gonna take the whole episode, but it tends to, so that's that's my expectation. I did it! I did it! You read okay. something. So Yay. Next up is... What's this letter all about? Doesn't appear to have a sender written anywhere. Oh. This handwriting is so sloppy. Wow. Dear Lysithia, I read the book you gave me. This must be from Cyril. He's learning so quickly. It was hard, and it got more easy, more I tried it, and it was fun, and I learned new stuff. <laughs> spirit. That does sound like a little kid, actually. Thanks you for helping me to read and to write. You are so welcome. Some things are hard to say and easy to write. I know just what you mean. I, I you want do. to read more and learn writing better. You're already doing so well with this. I can see how hard you're working. I am glad you are my friend. It makes me happy. <laughs> hey, Lysithia. Last night I finished reading the book you lent me. I wanted to tell you right away, but it was late, so I tried to write a letter. Um, Lysithia? Cyril, you sweet little... Did I do something wrong? I don't know what you're trying to say. Some feelings can't be verbalized or put into writing. Just... Look, it's just that... I... I'm sorry. I really don't know what you're trying to say. What I'm trying to say is... I'm Bappy too. <laughs> Bappy? <laughs> Let's keep studying and spending time together, okay? Oh, I get you now. That sounds great, Lysithia. <laughs> All right, that was adorable. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Bappy, too. Yeah, I can see how Lysithia would be extremely taken by um, being helpful. That's that's something that would definitely appeal to her. All right, Petra Linhart. I'm still going for their A support, which I haven't seen, but I or their second A support, I guess? I have seen this one, though. I, so that one we can skip over. Zero. How is your bow training progressing? I think maybe I've gotten better. It feels a lot easier to ready the bow lately. That is a nice thing to be hearing. You have my support with your efforts. I do? Yes. I am always cheering you on. I am long feeling a great affinity with you. Our positions are dissimilar, but our situations have great similarities. That is why I am always trying hard to be supporting and protecting you. You mean you've been cheering me on all along? That's nice to hear. Well, in that case, I'll support you too. You will? That gives me great joy. It makes you happy? It's gonna sound funny, but hearing you say that makes me feel happy too. You know, I just realized that there's... Well, when you talk... It's kind of powerful. It's like everything you say feels real nice and reassuring. Just listening to you makes me feel better about everything. I think it's a special talent you have. Words can be said by anyone. Alone, they are without power. What is meaningful is how you are feeling. I am hoping I can learn to use words well to convey my feelings. That is my wish. I am still learning. <laughs> My words are not coming out as properly as I am wanting. Maybe the words aren't, but the feelings behind them are. 
I really do think you're special. Now that I know you're supporting me, I'm going to work real hard not to let you down. And, um, I hope someday I can get strong enough to inspire you the same way you inspire me. You have already been achieving that goal. You already have great strength. You really think so? Nah, I still got a long way to go. I'm not tough enough to match you yet, so I'm gonna get stronger. Stronger and stronger so I can support you forever. Stronger and stronger? So you can be supporting me forever? Yeah. Forever and ever. It's kind of weird that... Uh, let's see. Stronger and stronger so I can support you forever. Stronger and stronger so you can be supporting me forever? Maybe this is too minor of a detail for them to have bothered with, but you would think that she would have like, picked up on the way that he said it. If she's going to literally just parrot back to him what he just said... You'd pick up on what he said uh, and say it that way, right? And I know that she normally says things like can be supporting instead of can support, but he literally just said it correctly and you would think she would notice that, especially since she apparently is like, has no issues reading and writing. Anyway. Even when I am being an old woman? It will be a difficulty then. <laughs> sure. Even when you're an old woman, I'll be an old man right beside you. Doing my best. Old woman Petra and old man Cyril supporting each other. I am looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, that does sound nice. Well, anyway, in general, that was about as much of a news fest as Petra's other support with Cyril. But one nice thing about it, I actually think... Cyril does have a point that, like, Petra is really good at being supportive and bolstering people, I think. I think that's actually legitimate. The time has come. <laughs> the music. With this tale of ghostly terror. <laughs> well, uh, Coming from Mercedes' voice, it's just so much sillier. Then we shall proceed. Our story begins when a friend of mine visited a graveyard in Eastern Fargus. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Whatever is the matter, Eloise? I've barely just begun. You got to the graveyard part so quickly. No warning at all. I wasn't ready. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, listen to me. What kind of knight am I? Continue, Mercedes. I won't make another peep. Very well, then. Now, where was I? Ah, yes. My friend went to visit his grandfather's grave, staying the night at a neighboring church. As darkness crept, he awoke to a strange sound. He peered out into the black of night to see a misshapen figure desecrating the graves. <laughs> He barricaded himself in his room, waiting for the first glimmer of sunlight before fleeing the church. My friend soon learned that the graveyard was built on the ruins of an ancient battlefield. Legend says that the souls of knights who fell during the battle roamed freely after dark. He was sure that the misshapen figure he saw was the ghost of a warrior searching for its earthly remains. After his stay at the church, my friend complained of restless nights and an unbearable weight on his chest. His closest friends and family feared a change in his eyes, as though it wasn't him occupying his body. No one knows for certain what happened that night. After years of isolation, his body was found in the very graveyard where it all began. Eloise, did you hear me? I said, in the very graveyard where it all began. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Is it over? Oh, I blacked out after the part with the misshapen... Blacked <laughs> out? Oh, so pathetic. I'm a knight. I have to be ready to fight anywhere, even in a <laughs> spooky graveyard. I don't 
think many battles take place in graveyards in the middle of the night. But I suppose it's important to be prepared, isn't it? <laughs> Precisely. Please, Mercedes, help me prepare. Of course. I'm happy to share another spooky story next time. I'm not sure this is really the right sort of immersion therapy. <laughs> also, that story wasn't, like, scary at all, but okay. The... But yeah, the, like, if anything, you need to be in the place, not not just talk about it, right? Whatever. Flame. Here to pester me, brother? No, I think I'm the one who ought to be pestered. Regardless of what I say to you, it is not as though it has any effect in reducing your worry over me. That is true. No matter where you are, and no matter what you're doing, I will always worry. But that's only because I treasure you so very much. Please understand, I'm not trying to hurt you. Please understand. Of that I am well aware. I am touched that you care so deeply. When I think of it, it is my own fault that you have become so overprotective. I cannot blame you. No, the fault is entirely mine. You were still so young. I placed far too much strain. So young. Our lack of resources was no excuse. Worse, I failed to watch you during the battle. Your mother, too. We lost her because of me. We're still so young. Oh. I see. Okay. I get where he, what he's getting at. Afterward, it broke my heart to see how much you would need to rest just to survive. I swore that I would dedicate every moment remaining in my life to your protection. Ever since then, I have been afraid of falling asleep. My fear of sleeping is outmatched only by my fear of spending my life alone. Even if it cannot last, I want to live among my peers as one of them, as an ordinary person. I want to live like common people. <laughs> Similar to how you and Mother coexisted with your own comrades back then, fighting side by side. Quite right. I know you must leave the nest someday. No matter how many ages our lives may span, I know that's the way of it. Father. Mm. Nobody is listening, Father. Let me address you as such just this once. I have valued the quiet days you and I have spent alone together, but I am no longer a child. Just as you and Mother met one another, and eventually I was brought into the world, I... I know. Please, no more. No matter what happens, you are my daughter. It gives me great joy to see you grow. But please, at least until this war is over, let me continue to worry. You're the most precious person in my life. I can't bear the thought of losing you. It seems I have no choice in the matter. I shall allow you to worry about me enough for yourself and mother both. But only that much and no more, my dear friend. Oh! Thank you, Seth Lee. Okay. <laughs> I mean, not that there is any doubt about who they are, but... That's... I think that's the first time it's been... I was gonna say... Well, I was gonna say earlier, I think that's the first time they've explicitly confirmed sort of the... How old they are. As opposed to just hinting at it. But yeah, then they come out and directly use their names. Like, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, well, well. Already seen that one. Didn't realize it until I started it. Linhart. I understand you'd endanger yourself to realize your dreams, but why go this far? You never seemed like the type to put this much effort into anything. Honestly, I find most everything annoying, which is most likely why you have such an opinion of me. But to continue my research without taking this chance to know the truth, what would be the point? Besides, ignorance can breed even greater dangers. For example, 
Do you know for whom Thunderbrand was originally crafted? The goddess. Correct. And because of that, everyone just stops thinking about it. No one really knows what the relic is made of, how it was crafted, or what its very structure may be. Until we know those things and truly understand the power and the danger relics hold, we won't be able to <sighs> gain any new knowledge. I'm tired of talking. You tire too easily. But I think I understand your logic. If you really want to risk your life, I won't stop you. Just remember, Linhart, curiosity killed the... I am not a cat. It will require more than my own curiosity to finish me off. <laughs> <laughs> You've got guts, I'll give you that. But don't blame me if something bad happens. If something happens, it happens. Finding out the truth means accepting the risks. Those who've identified plants, both poisonous and medicinal, took the same risk in eating each. I'm just like those people. Hmm, good point. Okay, fine. I give up. You win. I'll let you hold Thunderbrand just this once. Go on, give it a try. And don't worry about something bad happening. I'll be right here. Linhart has turned into a demonic beast. Linhart has been removed from your party. <laughs> Seen that one too. Again, didn't realize it until I started it. Oh well. Mistakes were made. Oh, look at all these Cyril supports. Hello, Cyril. On a break? Just figuring out what needs doing next. Why? You need something done? Nothing like that. I was hoping to speak with you. You want to talk? Yes. You told me that you are happy so long as you can continue to work for the Archbishop. Have you considered that there might be other ways to find happiness? Nope. Repaying my debt to Lady Rhea is all I want to do. Lady Rhea might not be around right now, but all the stuff I do, it's still for her. What will you do once your debt is repaid? I can never repay her. You are possessed of a rare and admirable devotion. I too owe the Archbishop a debt, but repaying her is only one of the reasons I am here. What you mean, one of the reasons you're here? I mean that I have other motivations aside from that. If those motivations required me to be elsewhere, then I would be elsewhere. Motivations? Yes. I am fortunate enough to share common cause with the Archbishop. Thus, I am able to remain. Don't be mistaken. It is admirable to repay one's debts, but that alone should not define a person. While it is good to make peace with the past, it is also essential to look ahead to the future. What kind of future do you see for yourself? What can you do to work toward it? I would like you to think about what might make your future brighter. I don't know if I understand you right. See, when Lady Rhea took me in, it was the first time I ever thought maybe I had a purpose. And I don't know what else I could wish for than that, you know? Hmm. I do not mean to trouble you. It's just that I cannot help but notice the way you squander your potential. It's as though you avert your gaze from it on purpose. Keep what I've said in the back of your mind, at least. You have plenty of time. Okay, Sedith. Well, I really like that support from the Sedith side. I mean, I just like Sedith being insightful in general. It's cool. And then also, finally, somebody being like, Cyril, stop it with the Lady Rhea stuff. But not in a mean way. Well, that's nice. Manuela, do you recall what you told me? You mentioned that... If a place shines brighter than anywhere else, then its shadows will be darker too. You sound so worried. That was nothing, dear. Call it a joke. It most certainly did not sound like a joke. Can you please elaborate? Of course, I love hearing about your glamorous past performing on stage. But all that glamour doesn't account for the shadows you spoke of. Well, I suppose I could share a little. Here's the thing about the opera. 
Talent isn't enough to earn you a position in a glamorous show. You need money, connections, and, failing those, the stomach to commit a spot of violence. I spent many nights buttering up nobles in power. No matter how humiliating the task, I'd do it because I wanted to be a star. I hope that kind of talk isn't too shocking for a sweet girl like yourself. Are you disillusioned with me now that you know my sordid past? Not at all. Understanding you more deeply, I can see how much strength has been required of you all this time. Okay, so buttering up <laughs> isn't sordid, but the fact that she calls it sordid suggests that she was doing a bit more than buttering up. Sounds not great. Flane. I am well aware that survival and striving for dreams sometimes means doing things we would not normally do. Perhaps because you have been so strong, lived with such conviction. Perhaps that is why your songs have touched so many people's hearts. Oh, you sound very wise all of a sudden. Thank you, Flane. I would like to rescind my original request of you. Your request to hear one of my songs? Indeed. Instead, I have a different request. I would like to see you perform an opera on stage. I don't know about that. It's been a long time since I stood on stage. I imagine you have experienced much since you left the opera company. It follows then that you have developed new insights, charm, and wisdom to share. <laughs> yes, I probably could play a tragic role even better now than I could back then. But it's hardly the time for operas. We need to put an end to this war first. Agreed. Let us make the curtain fall on this war as soon as possible. Maybe then we can raise the curtain on a brand new performance. That'd be something, wouldn't it? <laughs> that is exactly what I yearn for. Well, I guess that whole, that opera will have to be the substitute for the for Dorothea's opera about Edelgard in this route. Hey, Sedeth, I've been meaning to ask you, what is your relationship with Lady Rhea? That is certainly an abrupt question. You're much closer to her than anyone else in the entire church. Certainly, you're a good, upstanding person, but I can't help but feel there's something more to it. Supporting the Archbishop is my sole professional interest. Personally, I consider her to be something akin to a companion. A companion? Yes. Not in the Firefly exactly sense, companion. I assume. Friends who walk the same path toward the same destination. Hmm. Companion, huh? A companion. I guess that does sound about right, now that you say it. Though, I'll confess to being quite jealous. Not many people can call themselves companions of Lady Rhea. I do not know how she feels about it. Oh, come on. You must trust that she feels the same about you. There is no need for that sort of trust. My duties are the same regardless of her perspective. I consider you to be a companion also. A companion in fighting for the Archbishop? Certainly. Our goals are firmly aligned when it comes to that, are they not? You're right, they are. I suppose you and I could be considered companions in that sense. <laughs> I'm pleased to hear my sentiment reciprocated. I rely on you a great deal, after all. More than most. Whoa there, what's all this now? Flattery won't win you any prizes with me, Sedeth. I do not flatter. I merely want you to understand why it matters to me that you be more cautious in battle. As your companion, it is my wish for you to be safe. Oh good, we're back in familiar territory, with you admonishing me. Don't worry, I'll be careful. I'll always try to live up to your expectations. So don't expect too much or you'll wear me out. <laughs> All right, pretty close, I guess. A 
Um, Shamir, how do you figure I did today? In the battle, I mean. I tried to not get close to the enemy, and I even used some curved shots just like you taught me. And that was pretty good, huh? You did well. You maintained a safe distance. Well, that's even better than fine. <laughs> Is that worth celebrating? Ha! <laughs> you said I was fine before. Now you're saying I did well, and that's a big improvement. Especially since everyone knows you're always so strict. I give praise where it's due. To that point, you've made incredible progress. At first, you couldn't even draw a bow. Um, at first, you wouldn't even let me hold a bow. <laughs> really? You just gave me a stick with a piece of string tied on it, and you made me practice with that. Honest, I figured you were bullying me. I was really, really close to giving up. But then you finally gave me the bow. I mean it, I was mad. I'd done all the stuff you told me to, and I knew the way I was supposed to stand, and I could pull the string just so, but... Maybe I was testing you. Seeing if you'd give up. You're the one who insisted that I teach you archery. I never intended to take you on as my student. I just wanted to do whatever I could for Lady Rhea. More than just cleaning and chopping wood and such. I thought maybe I could help with the fighting, but I didn't know anything about swords. And archery was always something that interested me, so... You really helped me out with my dreams, even though you didn't get anything out of it. And that's really nice of you. I gain nothing personally, but the whole army benefits if you're skilled. And those of us from outside of Fodlan should support one another, right? But it's always been you helping me. I'm gonna keep working real hard with that bow so I can help you back. It's weird that Shamir doesn't seem to remember, like, she's like, <laughs> maybe I was testing you, I guess. It, it sounds like what I would have been doing in that situation, I don't know. <laughs> Manuela, there's something I must discuss with you. Eloise, hello. You're looking more serious than usual. Is everything okay? Uh, I'm in dire straits. Can you help me think of a gift for my daughter? Her birthday's just around the corner, and I can't think of anything to send her. Frankly, though I've sent her some wonderful gifts over the years, she never seems too excited about them. So, this year, I want to send her something special. Something that she'll gush about. I wouldn't know the first thing about buying a gift for a child, never having had one myself. Now, I must ask you to leave the infirmary. I need to make room for sick and injured patients, who I am sure will arrive at any moment. Oh, please have a heart! Can't you help me at all? This is an emergency! I've been racking my brain. I have no idea what she might like, and time's running out. I thought that a young woman such as yourself might be able to help. Young? Did, did you just call me? <laughs> Could you repeat that, please? <laughs> of course! Anything for a young, charming beauty such as yourself. I can think of none worthy of that description. Well, your quite astute observations have inspired me. <laughs> oh my god. So, let's discuss your daughter's birthday gift. Oh, thank you. In that case, will you come shopping with me when you're done for the day? Very well. Now, let's begin with the simplest question. What does your daughter enjoy? What kind of gifts have you given her for previous birthdays? Well, for the past few years, I've been sending her ancient, ancient coins. coins. Excuse me? <laughs> coins, I said from ancient civilizations. I've been diligently collecting them and passing them on. They're precious and historically significant. The makings of a great gift, don't you think? Is something wrong? Oh, you don't think an ancient coin is much of a present, I take it? I'm sure that for the right person, such a gift would be exquisite. You know what, Alois? Don't you fret. I'll think of something that will make your daughter happy and make up for all of your other gifts. Huh, I would not have guessed that that was why he was collecting the coins. I mean, it, it does... 
it does make sense. Like, it, it doesn't seem like something he would be into. I was surprised when I learned he was, so it kind of makes more sense now, but... Why would he think his daughter would want that? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, maybe if she was a big history buff or something. I'm not sure how old she is. I assume not that old, though. Anyway, I also like how... I don't think Alois even realized, like, what he was doing when he was complimenting Manuel. I don't think it was, like, strategic or anything. I think he just genuinely, like, meant what he said, which is amusing. <laughs> you know, Catherine, you really saved my heart. Oh, here we go. If not for you, I would have bought that phony coin. So, I just wanted to say... Money, thanks. Really, I can't begin to express oh my, my gratitude. Gosh. There's no need to thank me, Alois. It was nothing. But I am a little worried about you. You just immediately believed what he was saying. You're way too trusting. I wish you'd be a little more skeptical about people, that's all. Hmm. Yes, you make a good point. I'll try to be more cautious from now on. Um, excuse me, sir. I'm terribly sorry to interrupt. Good day, ma'am. Do you need something? I'm afraid so. You see, I'm a humble traveler, and a pickpocket stole all my money. I don't have enough to get home, and I have nowhere to sleep tonight. Please, sir, spare a little money to help me. Oh, I'm so sorry about your troubles. I don't have much on me, but here. Alois, no, not so fast. You there, traveler. Tell me your name. I'd like to take an official statement from you so that we can investigate this theft. Once we ascertain exactly what happened, then we will lend you some money. How does that sound? And she's gone. What? You don't mean she was trying to... Yes, she was. That's a common trick for cheats to pull. They pluck at your heartstrings so that you'll give them your money. You just said you'd be more careful, too. You really are an easy mark, Alois. Ugh, how embarrassing. Why are you so quick to trust people? I've always believed that to earn others' trust, you have to be trusting. You're taking that philosophy a bit too far. He's just a nice guy. A very nice guy, that's all. Manuela? What's she doing down there? Ugh. What did I do to deserve pain oh, like Oh, God. Alright. Same thing as always. She seems fine. I ought to just keep walking. See no evil, right? Stay! Right? There. Uh. Cyril! It must be a little dollop of destiny meeting you here. Listen, you wouldn't leave me when I needed a little help, would ya? The voice acting. Um, okay, what do you need? That's my boy, Cyril. You're a saint. I don't want to be trouble, but get me water and medicine. Now, please. Whew, I feel a bit better now. Thank you so much, Cyril. My sweet, dear little Cyril. Professor Manuela, why do you do this to yourself? It makes you feel so bad the next day, I don't see the point. Oh, you know, sometimes I'm upset and... Well, that's it, really. It's not something a kid like you could understand. Maybe one day. Or not. Who knows? All I know is that my head aches. Professor, isn't this stuff why you keep running men off? And them running is what upsets you. Then you do this all over again. You can't understand heartbreak until you felt it for yourself. But when you're older, your heart will break. And I'll make sure to be there to get you water and all that. Um, that's okay. <laughs> You're always so nice and sweet, Cyril. I'll pay you back. Promise. 
Nope, no thanks. No reason to. You don't have to do anything. Oh, don't be shy. I'll be waiting in the wings for that little heart of yours to shatter. <laughs> Damn, Manuela. Uh, what were you saying? I interrupted, I think. I was just saying I need to get going. A lot of work to do. Lots. Okay, bye. That's like the most evil that Manuela has ever sounded. Holy crap. Okay, we are done with supports and eh, about the right length for an episode as well. So next episode we will attack Fort Mercius. Until then, 